So the next thing we're gonna look at is direct labor variances. I think this one is gonna be a little bit easier. Um, direct labor variance, to the, direct labor rate variance is how much of the total labor variance is due to paying a higher or lower hourly wage rate than anticipated. So the rate variance, we, we came up with the flexible with the flexible budget variance in total, but now we're gonna break it down into more detail just like we did with materials. So we have a, a rate variance. The rate variance is about comparing the hourly wage rate. And then the efficiency variance is the amount of time that was used, the actual time that was used versus what we were anticipating. And all of that is based on production. How much did we produce? Then this is what we were expecting in terms of our usage. And then let's compare that to, to the actual, right? So the way we're gonna come up with the labor rate variance is we're gonna take the actual rate minus the standard rate, and we're gonna multiply that by the actual hours. The efficiency, va or efficiency variance is gonna be computed by taking the actual hours minus the standard hours allowed, multiplying by the standard rate. So if we have the direct labor rate variance, the example here, let's say Tucson actually used 1500 hours of direct labor. That's the number of people that were paid, the hours that were paid to our direct labor during a, a, a period of time, whatever that is, the first month or whatever it is. And the direct labor rate was $23.25 per hour. The standard rate, which we had computed before, is $22 per hour. So that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna first compare the actual hours Actually, we're gonna compare the rates. Actual rate minus the standard rate. What was the difference between the two? $23.25, that was the actual. The standard is 22. That difference is then gonna be multiplied by the actual hours of 1,500. 1500 and that's gonna give us whether we have a favorable or unfavorable variance. In this case, it was uh, because the rate was higher than what we expected it to be, we're gonna come up with an 1875 unfavorable variance. That's our rate variance. Our efficiency variance is now based upon how many hours were used, actual hours compared to what we were anticipating or the standard hours allowed. Standard hours allowed. So the actual hours, 31,000 cases, that the cases were produced, but the actual hours um, was 1,500 hours Let's go, let's go look at the example here. Yeah, Tucson actually used 1,500 hours. So those are the actual hours. So we're taking that from the previous slide. 1,500 hours, actual hours. And we're gonna subtract from that what we should have the standard hours allowed. That's what we're expecting. 31,000 cases multiplied by 0 0.05 hours per case. We figured that out a while back, so this is what we were expecting. And what we come up with, well, it's 31,000, it's 0.05, it's 1,550 hours. So we were expecting to, to use up 1,550. The uh, actual hours was 1,500, so we actually used up less hours than what we were expecting. Uh, so that's more efficient in, in our production line, right? So that difference is uh, 15, this is 1550, this is 1500, that, 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 that difference is $50, so, or 50 units, I'm sorry, 50 hours. So 50 hours times the $22 per hour gives us $1,100, and that's a favorable variance because we ended up using less hours than what we were expecting. 1100 favorable. It, it's probably easier to look at this graphic representation just like we did for materials. So on the far left side is actual, on the far right side is budgeted or standard, okay? In between, in between is a combination of actual and standard. 
So to focus in on the rate variance, we're simply going to focus on the rates. So we're going to use the actual hours on this side and the actual hours here. So that's going to be the same. It's 1,500 actual hours. The actual rate we figured out to be was 23.25. The standard rate was 22. So now we know we're focusing on the difference between the actual rate and the standard rate. So this comes up to 34,875. This comes up to 33,000. The difference is 1875. We ended up spending more actual than what we were expecting based upon the standard rate. So 1875, unfavorable. Let's go over here. This is the pure budget, standard hours allowed times the standard rate. This is the actual hours times the standard rate. So now they're focusing on the hours and that's the efficiency element all right so this 1500 the actual hours multiplied by the standard rate of 22 dollars per hour gives us thirty-three thousand dollars. we're going to compare that to the pure budget standard hours allowed times the standard rate 31,000 times 0 0.05 that's going to give us the standard hours allowed this is what we were expecting times the standard rate of $22 per hour, that's gonna give us 34,000. So we're gonna compare this 34,100 to the 33,000. That difference is $1,100 and it's favorable because we ended up spending less with the actual hours than what we were budgeting. This is lower than that. So the difference is 1,100, that's a favorable. We're gonna combine these two together, combine them together and we're going to end up with 775 unfavorable. The reason why it's unfavorable is because the 1875 is larger than the favorable variance. So that's going to give us, we're going to net those two. But when we net them, the larger number is unfavorable. So that means we end up with 775 unfavorable. So the flexible budget gave us a total of 775 unfavorable, but it's a little bit, a little bit misleading. We went down and broke it in detail to determine whether or not we have a direct labor rate variance or we have a, an efficiency variance problem. And it turns out that efficiency wise, we, we did very well. So there was really no issues in terms of efficiency. In fact, we ended up doing much better than what we thought. But our unfavorable rate variance was pretty, is higher than what we would have anticipated. I mean, we, we had an unfavorable variance, but if we focus, we could have probably worked out okay had we had our rate variance under control. So now we can conclude now we're gonna focus on our rates and see whether we're paying people a little bit higher. Why are we paying people higher than what we anticipated? Did we guess wrong? Because that could be we just missed it on our, on our, on our estimates. Or did we just, um, or did we end up paying a little bit more in overtime than we should have because of whatever issues that were going on? So we, we can analyze that a little bit more. We'll ask our supervisors out on the floor to give us some impact, some, some feedback on that. Okay, so here's a summary of all the direct material variances and direct labor variances and who, who we may be, to be talking to. So our direct material uh, price variances, whenever we have a, a, a variance, especially if it's unfavorable, either way, we're gonna be talking to our purchasing supervisor for price variances. For material uh, uh, usage variances or quantity variances, production supervisors. When we have direct labor rate variances, we're, we're gonna talk to both our human resource because the, the numbers, the anticipated rates are probably gonna come from HR. We'll talk to the human resources, we'll talk to our production supervisors because it could be either one of these. It could be a, a missed guess from human resources or maybe our production supervisors are, are missing something in terms of overtime or, or, or what have you. And then our direct labor efficiency various variances, that's gonna be focused on productions, okay? All right, so let's go on and discuss the advantages and disadvantages of using standard costs and variances, all right. What are some of the advantages of using the standard cost and variances? Well, the advantages is, is that it really sets a cost bench, benchmark. We have something tangible that we can actually compare production to. So when we get our production supervisors together, our production managers together, we can say, this is what we were expecting. 
This is what our actual was, and it gets a lot of discussion as to why we have some differences. The standard costing is going to be useful for budgeting, and in fact, it forces or requires production and accounting to really work closely together, and you put a lot more time and effort on your budgeting process to make sure you've got numbers that work. Motivation. If you have a standard cost that everybody on the floor understands what the standards are, how much the pieces per hour or, or number of units being used or, or whatever it may be, if the production knows what it is and they're out producing, they're watching it, they're paying attention to it because they know that they're going to be judged, their performance is going to be judged based upon those standards. So that may act as a motivator for them. And then uh, it does create this is kind of interesting. They call it simplified bookkeeping. Okay, let's go with that because I think we're going to find out that in fact it's actually going to be more complicated and it's actually going to be a little bit more time consuming. But let's go with it. The textbook suggests that there's some simplified bookkeeping element of it. So let's go with that. Okay, so the disadvantages of using standard cost and variances uh, you may get outdated or inaccurate standards. Sometimes that puts big monkey wrench in the whole process because it's such, it's so time consuming. It's hard to come up with updated standards. So it's often easy to just let things kind of go with standards that are just outdated and, and the, now you don't really have good information. Lack of timeliness because of the process of coming up with these numbers. Sometimes it's very time consuming. It could be a while before you come up with the numbers. Focus on operational performance measures and visual management. We're going to look at, in essence, we're looking at focusing too much on operational performance measures and, and visual management and not enough time in looking at what, what, the, what the managers are talking about, what, what the information is coming back. So that can be a disadvantage. Lean thinking. Sometimes this takes a little bit of time and effort and things fall uh, behind. And increase in automations and decrease in direct labor. If you have more automation, then, then the, the need for standard costing begins to decrease because you've got automation that's really driving everything. And then sometimes you can have unintended behavioral consequences. And the question is, is well, well, that could be, well, uh, I'll give you the example, a production, man, or a production uh, employee sees another guy doing very well and says, hey guy, you need to slow down because if you keep producing this fast, it's gonna change our standards just to make us all work harder. So slow down. Don't, don't push any more than you need to. Just meet the standards and don't go any further. So that could be an unintended behavioral consequence.